So around five years into business is when I started hitting my stride with the rebrand and focusing on quality and really establishing what my bread and butter would be and, and the focus on quality and buying nice tools and using quality materials. This is when I really feel as though I came into my own. I understood my market and I understood how to sell the jobs to the right people. So right around the same time that I met Nick, we were really pushing each other to do more. And, and Nick was a really good sounding board and setting a really good example of where my business should be heading and what I should be doing for, for my business. What's up, everyone? How's it going? Hope you are having a good week. It is rainy here in New Jersey. It's been raining. It rained all weekend. Um, it rained it's today, Tuesday. It rained yesterday, Monday. It's raining today, and it looks like Thursday we may have a little bit of a break in the rain, but it's going to be overcast. And then it looks like the next day that it will not rain uh, is not going to be until Sunday. So hopefully wherever you guys and girls are, you're having a little bit better weather than we are here. Um, <clears throat> it wouldn't be bad if I were a duck or a frog, but this rain, it's not good. Fall is not a fall is not a, a great time for it to be raining like this. I feel like it just makes it look sad. Fall should be nice and cool weather and trees turning color and not just wet, bitter, a little bit cold. Um so hopefully you guys are having a little bit better of a weather week. I'm having a good week work-wise, moving ahead on our project. We have all the cabinets set. I have a countertop template scheduled. Um, <clears throat> so moving ahead with things. We're on to trims getting dropped on Thursday. Appliances are getting dropped tomorrow. Um, so we are really moving full steam ahead. So I'm happy to be at that point. And then we'll have paint, some tile work. We have exterior work getting done um, on Thursday, as long as the rain holds off long enough for them. And then we, the only other thing we have to button up outside are some rails and some stucco work. So we're moving along. I'm excited to be moving along. The customers are happy to be moving along. So um, everything's good for me as far as work goes, um, other than this weather. I just, such a nice time of year, fall. We only get it one time a year, and we're dealing with all this nasty rain. I want to get out and ride my dirt bike, and uh, <clears throat> before all of the leaves fall, and it gets super sketchy, and it's just, uh, it hasn't worked out. I actually um, just got some new suspension for my bike that came in last week. It came in Friday, uh, <clears throat> so... Opened it up Friday after work, checked it out, put it on Saturday morning and, uh, oh no, sorry, Saturday evening. I wanted to do it in the morning, but then I found out that Selby had a sleepover for a birthday party. Tilly had a sleepover just for fun. And Rachel had a reunion, a, a high school reunion. So I had Saturday night alone. So I decided just to spend the day with the girls um, and realizing that I'd be home alone, decided to do this event suspension on Saturday night. Um, so my buddy Dom came over and, uh, gave me some company while I put the suspension on my bike, serviced the linkage, got it all up and running just for it to sit because of rain. Um, it's been raining. Like I would go out, especially with new suspension. I would go out and give it a test if it, it were decent, but it, when I say raining, <clears throat> we've gotten like, I think an inch of rain the one day, another half inch the next day. So it's just been consistently raining. So it's very wet uh, and it'll be muddy and I'm not going out until it dries out some. All right, enough of that. Let's get to blog post for this week. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> oh, so I got a DM. Actually, it may have been yesterday, the day before where I had another midweek that I was ready to go with. And then I felt as though this, this meshed with last week's midweek a little bit better than what I was going to do this week. And it, it seemed as though it picked up somewhat where I left off or maybe, maybe explains a little bit more um, of the beforehand of where I left off last week, but somebody wanted to know, really what the beginnings of my business looked like. You know, when I first started my business 
and what that looked like. So I figured I'd hop on here that this went well with last week. Um, so if you haven't listened to last week's yet, hop on there, Spotify, wherever you get this, listen to last week's. Uh, it talks a little bit about what I was doing when I was working for a plumber when I first went into business. Um, but this week, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how I got into this business and what my first few years of work looked like before I really got on the path and the trajectory um, that I'm on now. Um, really, before I found my way and my calling and, and what was my bread and butter, what did what did my business first look like? Um, before I get into that, I want to take a quick second here. Um, to thank our sponsors for this midweek pod- podcast. As you all know, without the support of you guys um, and the support of companies like Cucan Brothers, Anderson Windows, I would not be here right now doing this. Um, so I, I want to thank them. Um, if you're in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, hopefully you're using Cucan Brothers as your building material supplier. Um, if you aren't, you really need to check them out. I've been bugging Ryan and the team up there that they need to open a location down in South Jersey. Um, he always makes fun of me and says that we're too far south. It's like the country down here, <clears throat> being that they're based in North Jersey. But um, they do ship stuff nationwide if you want some of their their molding profiles, which you really can't get from anyone else but them. Um, but if you have not been to their facilities, you need to check them out. Their, their indoor lumber storage, their molding, where you can pull from, you can pull in, not get wet, pull your, pull your trim stock, your lumber, uh, and get on the way and not loading it out in the rain. Um, really top of the line, really, uh, a, a good lumber yard, all their locations, but you know, you need to check them out. Um, they've been in business for over 110 years. They have nine locations in the area. Kuken brothers, K U I K E N has all the local knowledge to keep your projects moving, including some of the most knowledgeable millwork experts when it comes to Anderson windows and doors. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about Anderson's big door options, but you can experience grander with Anderson big doors crafted for luxury living. These colossal doors redefine elegance, merging timeless design with modern innovation. Elevate your space and make a bold statement with Anderson Big Doors. Wondering where you can check these big bifold lift and slide doors out? Um, again, if you're in northern New Jersey, visit Cucan Brothers Midland Park uh, Millwork Showroom. You can operate full-size Anderson Big Door displays. And while you're there, make sure to check out their classical and modern craftsman molding profiles. These profiles have been shipping job site direct and around the country for the past 10 years, all milled from poplar, all based on historic molding patterns that will help you create an absolutely timeless look without the headache of having to have them custom milled, save you a little bit of money there too. Cucan Brothers, your trusted source for Anderson windows and doors and those stunning classical molding profiles. Visit www.cucanbrothers.com, that's K-U-I-K-E-N, brothers.com slash classical check them out good friends of the modern craftsman podcast good friends of trg home concepts so thanks to those guys for sponsoring this podcast uh again i wouldn't be able to do this without companies like this supporting me so make sure that you uh patronize their businesses and if you aren't in the area order a molding catalog from them and they can ship them to you all right, back to the regularly scheduled program. Um, so I had a listener reach out asking me about how I started my business and what it looked like. So right from college, uh, so in college, I was I was initially a biology major. Uh, I went to University of Colorado um, and I went out there and I just honestly, anxiety got the better of me. Um, I, I realized fairly quickly that I did not want to be a science major. I didn't want to be a bio major. I wasn't going to be a scientist. I wasn't going to be a teacher. So what was I doing out there? Why was I spending all of this time, this money? Um, I was enjoying myself, but I, I really, I don't know. I've always been of the mindset to, um, figure out what's next, where am I going to be next? And I was having 
a lot of trouble seeing that while I was out there and understanding what that looked like. <clears throat> so I ended up dropping out. Um, and then I worked just, my dad had a construction company. I worked, uh, I was doing anything. I was mowing lawns, whatever I could do at this point. I was 19 years old. Um, I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I figured maybe I would just end up working construction, not going back to school. Um, but after a year and a half or so of doing that, I was like, all right, maybe this isn't what I want to do. Um, I just, I, I wasn't thrilled with where things were going with me. Uh, I wanted a little bit more direction and I felt as though college would provide that for me. Um, so my brother at the time was going to Drexel university in Philly. Um, they had just established a construction management program, I guess not just, but they had gone from it being a night program to, um, to a, uh, a day program full time. Also time out. I today, my coloring's back to normal. So whatever the heck was happening in this room with this lighting, I was very orange last week, but I'm, I'm back to normal. Um, I'm not orange. I don't look like I have a spray tan. I did get a haircut and I did shave. So I, I think I look very young. I went up to the girls, I got a haircut and then I went to the girls and I shaved after. And I was like, don't I look so young? And Selby said, no, you just look like you shaved. Uh, you look the same just with your beard shorter, but I saw Justin at work yesterday and he said that I look like a young man. So I, I happen to agree with him. I, fe I feel like it took, it took, uh, it took years off of me. Um, <clears throat> so I transfer, I ended up transferring into the Drexel construction management program. A lot of my credits from the year or so of school that I had transferred over. Um, I had good grades throughout high school and my first year of college. So, excuse me. Um, I ended up getting a academic scholarship. Give me one. Sorry, had a tickle. Uh, I ended up getting an academic scholarship where they paid for, I believe at this point it was $20,000 worth of my tuition each year. If I were to get, um, if I held a 3.0 grade point average. So, it made sense for me to go this route. I, I felt that this was going to be the direction I would get a job as a PM or a super or um, <clears throat> an estimator <clears throat> in commercial construction. And that was going to be, that was going to be the direction that I was going to go. I knew that I enjoyed being in the, in the um, residential construction world, but I figured maybe something with a little bit bigger that could afford, um, a more, a more white collar experience within the, the blue collar world of construction was going to be the ticket for me. So, um, I went to school there. That's what Rachel and I met my first term there. Um, and I absolutely hated it. I hated school. Um, I did very well. I graduated from Drexel uh, with a three, nine, eight, I believe I got one a minus. So I did very well. I tried very hard. Um, and I did really well in school, but I just, I hated it. It, it was, it wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, I ended up essentially scheduling after. So Rachel, when I met Rachel, um, I had just turned 21. Um, she was graduating that year and intended to move home. She's from North Jersey. So she was going to get a job in New York. Um, and we met and she ended up sticking around Philly for her next year. She switched things up. She got a job locally, um, moved to South Jersey suburbs. And I ended up basically scheduling all of my classes for two days a week. I would commute to school on Tuesday. I moved out of the city. I would commute to school on Tuesdays and Thursdays, take classes from eight in the morning till 10 at night, take the train home. And then I would work Monday, Wednesday, and Friday doing whatever I was doing, residential, mowing lawns, anything I could do to make money, plowing snow. Um, it didn't matter. I just, I didn't want to be in a classroom. Um, I did my first internship with a, um, <clears throat> a civil contractor out of Blackwood, New Jersey. They did bridge work, road work, demolition, um, all commercial. And I hated that. I, I, it was, 
the six months that I did that, I would say was probably like the least happy I've been in my entire life. I worse than school, worse than anything else. I just, I hated being there. I hated sitting in a chair, making phone calls, plan review. Um, nothing about it interests me. I really, the guy I worked under was absolutely horrible. Um, so I don't think that that helped. And halfway through the internship, they were like, yeah, let's put you with somebody else. Um, so it did get better, but I just, I, I didn't enjoy myself there. And I, I quickly realized that this was not the route that I wanted to take, which probably made it even worse for me because I had already tried something else. Um, I always enjoyed residential, but I was like, I got to get away from this. I, I have to, you know, working for a small residential contractor has its challenges. And I wanted to be able to make a living and provide a living. And I didn't see, which I think is, is, is an ongoing issue within our industry. I didn't see a means to an end there working residential. Um, so, uh, I was like, basically uh, I'm getting so much of this paid for, I have to finish. Um, so I finished out schooling, Rachel and I moved in together and I was like, yeah, I don't, like I didn't line up a job through Drexel. They had the job fairs, all that. I didn't even walk in graduation. Um, and I was like, whatever, I'll just like, if somebody's going to pay me 20 bucks an hour working for them, I'll just start my own company and I'll charge 35 bucks an hour and I'll start with whatever I can. If it's paint work, I'll start with handyman work. So, um, I had a Toyota Tacoma as soon as I graduated from college. Rachel's parents gave us a graduation or gave me a graduation present um, for a weekend away. We went up to Providence, stayed in Providence, and then I picked up an ARE um, contractor utility cap for my little two door, two wheel or four wheel drive Tacoma and put that on, built some shelves in it started buying some tools. I got general liability insurance. My uncle, who's an attorney, helped me form an LLC, which was TRG Home Concepts. And this was in 2010. Um, and uh, I was like, time to start finding work. <clears throat> so um, I had known people in the area. People started giving my name out. The first job that I got was in Delran, New Jersey. Um, a split level home. They wanted all of the masonite doors removed new ma they were or sorry they were um lawan so they were a stain grade lawan hollow core they wanted all of them removed they wanted masonite six panel installed new hinges uh and then they wanted new casing so there's clamshell um stain grade casing they pine that was stained they wanted all of that removed and then they wanted me to install new super nice two and a quarter colonial paint grade um prep all that and paint it so uh i didn't know how to do that i looked up how to fit doors into an existing opening um i remember for this job not being able to fit i think it was like 20 doors in the house not being able to fit all of the doors into my tacoma with the cap on it so i had some strapped to the back or to the top and then i had some sticking out of the back and i still had to make multiple trips because I couldn't fit all of it in my um, in my little truck. So the way that I approached drinking a little iced coffee, the way that I approached every job when I first started out was I would look at the job, I'd measure the job, I'd go on the estimate, um, <clears throat> and then I would buy whatever tools I needed for that job. So I'd take a deposit uh, if they accepted my estimate. And then I would buy whatever, uh, whatever tools I needed. So I remember for this, um, I bought the Porter cable, the three gun package with the pancake compressor that everyone gets. Cause I didn't have a nail gun. Excuse me. I didn't have a nail gun. <clears throat> um, so I bought that it had like the 16 gauge, the 18 gauge and the, the narrow crown stapler. And then um, I had a little router, a little trim router, a little Bosch one. So I bought the Porter Cable hinge jig. And then I really wanted, uh, I had a planer at this point um, <clears throat> for the door edges for fitting them into the existing opening that I would like fine tune them with. I had a belt sander that was my grandfather. So I used that. Um, I had a shop back, I bought some paint brushes, caulk gun, 
And then I also, I wanted a track saw to be able to cross cut all the doors and I couldn't afford that. So what I did was I took a piece of plywood and I got uh, a piece of door stop and I snapped a string line and I, I nailed this door stop onto this piece of plywood <clears throat> super straight. And then I took my saw and I, I set it to cut through the plywood and run the guard of the saw up against this little stop that I had. So that created my track. So I made my own track, uh, zero clearance tracks, just like the, the tracks that they have now. But I basically just had to keep the saw pressed up against the, the guard and it would cut straight. So I used that as my track saw and I made a short one for cutting short, and then I made one for cutting eight foot pieces of plywood long ways, and I kept them in my truck, and those were like my tracks. And I still have the circular saw. It was a rigid sidewinder um, that I used for doing all this stuff. So I did that job. That was my first ever job. Um, I remember, I, th I think I charged, <clears throat> I went to Home Depot and I looked at what they charged to replace a door. And maybe it was, it was 125 bucks. Um, and so maybe I charged a hundred cause I was like, I can't charge what home Depot charges, uh, per door. And then I did, uh, let's see. Um, I think I did like 25 bucks to case each door out. I probably actually, I should look it up. I wonder if I still have my estimate from that. I, I have a lot of a lot of old estimates, um, but I don't know. Nah, it doesn't look like I have that one. Um, that was probably like pre me having any letterhead or anything like that. <clears throat> um, it does go back to, yeah, my only goes back to my eighth year in business. So this was definitely first year in business. Um, I may be able to find emails though. That'd be interesting to pull up but I definitely didn't have TRG home concepts emailed there either. Um, but I digress. So, uh, at that point, maybe it was like 15, 20 doors in the house, a hundred bucks per door, uh, and then 25 bucks to case each one out. Um, I probably charged like a couple grand max to do this. Um, let's see, 20 times a hundred plus 25 times 20 would be another 500. So yeah, like $2,500 plus, then like the hundred bucks, I'm pretty sure included the $20 door slab in there. So I probably charge like 2,500 bucks to do this whole job. Um, and then paint everything, maybe three grand. Uh, and I was like, oh man, I'm just rolling in it now. I'm making so much money. Um, little did I know that I was not. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so the next handful of years, most of my project followed this form, right? I get a phone call, usually a referral from somebody because there was there were no marketing leads. I wasn't marketing myself. So it was somebody who wanted something done for cheap for somebody who was just getting started. It was not anyone who wanted anything done because they're like, oh, hire this guy. He's going to be like the best person you can hire to do this or um, has the best tools, is like very professional, very responsive. Site protection is amazing. No, none of this. Um, it was... Hey, if you want somebody who just started out, who's very cheap, hire this guy. Um, <clears throat> so one good thing for me at this point is Rachel and I had bought a fixer upper. So, uh, if I didn't have work going on, I could work on my own house. So a lot of, a lot of the things that I was trying or wanted to learn how to do, I would try on, on my own house. So there's five years that we're in that house that, you know, I did the bathroom in there. I did the kitchen in there. I did flooring in there. I did wainscoting in there, trim in there, rehang doors, paint, basement, um, redid the garage in there, built carriage doors, fencing there. So a lot of stuff that I learned how to do. I, I redid the driveway there, poured concrete there. I learned how to do by trying on my, um, on my own house. So <clears throat> if I had something that I wanted to try for somebody, it's like, oh, somebody got a hold of me that they want wainscoting done for their nursery. Like I'll try that here. I remember I did a coffered ceiling in there. Um, so a lot of stuff that I just wanted to try out 
I would try there. I did a, some light framing there. I reframed some ceiling, some roof framing, um, <clears throat> a ton of stuff, even landscaping that I just wanted to learn about. I, I tried there. So I had a, a decent knowledge of what I was doing by the time I got done that house. But I, I would, I would basically, um, for years I would get a phone call. I'd go to the customer's house. I'd look at, they want what done. I'd sit there and listen to them, not really say much, tell them that, Rather than give them any ideas or answers, I didn't really like to shoot from the hip. So I'd like to take this home, digest what we spoke about, and then I would get back to them with the response. Realistically, it's because I had no idea what I was talking about. So I didn't want to say anything. I wanted to go figure out what I had to do, what I had to say, and then I would open that conversation up with them via email or a phone call Um in case they had things to ask me that they they couldn't put me on the spot, I could find the answers that I needed. So um, <clears throat> I did, a friend of Rachel's um, family needed all hardwood floors done throughout their house. So I did that um, as one of my first jobs. I bought a floor stapler, um, <clears throat> learned how to install pre-finished hardwood floor, I bought a multi-tool so I could undercut the jams. I actually think for that job, I didn't buy a multi-tool. It was too much money. I know I didn't. I bought a uh, Japanese flush cut undercut saw. So all the jams in there, I cut by hand with a flush cut saw, which I still have. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. I still have that saw. Um, and uh, the, the multi-tool is too expensive. I got there a few years later, and I still have that multi-tool as well. Um, I bought, I believe I bought a miter saw for that one. <clears throat> um, a table saw was one of the early purchases. Uh, and then she needed me to paint. So I painted in there and then she hired me to trim out her living room. When I, when I trimmed out the living room, there was a bunch of plaster damage. So we ended up pulling down the ceiling in there. Um, so I bought a bunch of drywall tools at that point. I, uh, one of my first jobs was replacing a couple of windows, like replacement windows. So I had to learn how to, um, measure for replacements, which I'm pretty sure I still don't know how to do. Um, basically pull the, pull the blind stops off, set new windows, caulk them in, put the new trim on the inside. I remember that was very stressful because I was ordering windows that were probably, probably had order three windows that were $400. And I was like, oh my God, I could mess up $1,200 worth of windows here. Um, but yeah, I just did <clears throat> anything that came my way. I got hired for a job in Haddonfield for friends of my aunt and uncle who wanted a handyman just to do stuff around their house. That was one of my first jobs. And my, I, I had just gotten a little trailer that I could pull with my my Tacoma. Um, and one of the first jobs they lived on the street that was like straight up and then into their driveway. And my truck could barely get up it because it's like a four cylinder. I could barely get up it with my trailer. Um, but they hired me to do a bunch of work in their house. And I remember the first day I was there, um, I was always very anxious meeting people. And like, <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was on edge and what were they going to ask me to do? And just trying to establish myself. And I had low self-confidence in what I was doing and in my business. And I remember I stepped in dog shit outside of their house and then like tracked it into the house and was absolutely humiliated. Um, I mean, it was their own dog, but still I was probably had sold them that I put like drop cloths down everywhere. And then I was just tracking dog shit through their house. Um, so that's what I did. They at some point started having me do electrical work, which I was very uncomfortable with. And I understood what I was doing, but I was just like, I don't think I should be doing this. Um, <clears throat> hire an electrician to do this. I don't want to be doing this. So I ended up telling them I couldn't work for them anymore because it's like not what I do. I don't want to be doing electrical work. You can hire an electrician. Um, and they weren't happy about it because they felt they were paying me so much, paying me $35 an hour. And I should basically do whatever they asked of me. But I was, I was signed up to be fixing like screen doors and doing some painting and replacing some rot, not electrical work. Um, I was, I did a ton of drywall patching in these days people had a leak or they had a hole in their wall or the dog chewed something up. Um, 
I did a fair amount of real small trim stuff. I had also hooked up with a realtor that would use me to do closeouts on contracts, right? Where they needed stuff fixed prior to closing. So I did a bunch of that work. And then probably three years into business, I hooked up with the plumber that my last podcast was on, um, where I was doing a lot of bathroom work for him, a lot of um, late renovations, a lot of remodels. He did a couple of nice bathrooms, but most of them were um, vinyl flooring, glue down vinyl tiles, some ceramic tile, some ceramic tile surrounds. Um, but really, it was it was very builder's grade, matching a lot of what was there. Nothing one or two that were custom. Um, but other than that, it, it was not, it was, it was more budgeted renovations. Um, but it was, it was steady work. So I always had a couple of bathrooms <clears throat> that I could count on every couple months with him. So I had my own thing. I was working on my own house. Um, and then I always had this guy, Wayne feeding me some work, even though it wasn't really what I wanted to be doing. It just all things combined between my own house my own work that I was drumming up and then Wayne and the realtor, I had enough to keep me busy full time. And I started to establish myself a little bit more and I had too much going on, um, between all of this, but I didn't want to tell the realtor. No, I didn't want to tell Wayne no. Cause, and I didn't want to tell new leads. No, because, um, you're just, you're fear that things are going to dry up. You're fearful of that. And, I just kept saying yes to everyone. So I ended up bringing on around this time, three years in or so my first full-time employee, which I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and, uh, I, I didn't ever make any money doing that. I, I basically paid my employees. And for years, this was the model that I had either one or two, um, helpers and, my job started becoming nicer and bigger and more elaborate, but I never really restructured anything to, to truly understand my numbers. Um, so I, I started, uh, getting enough of my own bathroom work that it just got to be too much working for this guy, Wayne. So I told him I couldn't do it anymore. I, I at this point had kind of outgrown the handyman work that I had been doing for this, this realtor, Gene, um, so I moved on from that and I was really just focusing on my own kitchens, bathrooms, light renovations, trim work, radiator covers, um, any little job like that, that I could fill in. And I kept busy doing that. Um, and at this point I was making enough money and had enough work down the pipeline that I was like, all right, I'm going to legitimize myself. I had just met Nick, I saw what he was doing up in Massachusetts. We were speaking a lot um, and I decided to get a new van. And at this point I rebranded the business. Um, this was, excuse me, <coughs> just unplug my computer. Um, <clears throat> 2015. So five years into business at this point, And I, at this point had finally just been able to afford um a van and I, I rebranded. I got new business cards. I got a letterhead made. I got a website made. I got some photographs taken of jobs that I had done. <clears throat> um, and I really started marketing and branding myself as inexpensively as possible. A lot of this was through social. Um, and this, this really at this point, five years in with the rebrand and focusing on quality and really establishing what my bread and butter would be and, and the focus on quality and buying nice tools and using quality materials. This is when I really feel as though I came into my own. I understood my market and I understood how to sell the jobs to the right people. So around five years into business is when I started um, hitting my stride <clears throat> from five to seven years. I think I grew not really with regard to how much work I did, but just quality of job. Um, and I, I never, I never readjusted or reformatted the business. So I, I went into those, those bigger jobs or, or more detail oriented jobs, bidding them the same way that I bid prior work. And I think that I, I was over my head, um, as far as my systems and my processes and, and payment structure and pricing 
and I really was spinning my wheels and doing projects that were too involved for too little money. And I, I was okay with it because I, I was developing uh, a network and uh, a sub network, a customer network, and also a portfolio, but it was short lived. I couldn't sustain that. <clears throat> um, so 20, 20, this was 2015, I think 20, right around COVID, um, I reprioritized um, and really refined what I was doing, refined my customer base, refined my co- my business, really leaned things out, started depending more on subs. Um, and uh, I, I feel that that was the next transition of my business closer to where I am now. Um, even 2021, 20, 22, I think that I changed things again to where I really am now. And I'm still in that, that same place from two years ago. Um, but I've been through a bunch of different iterations of TRG, but, um, I look back on the early days and I I did have a lot of fun, but I also, there was, there was a lot of sleepless nights where somebody got hold of me. I had no idea how to do something and I would go home and I would figure out what I need for the job, what I need to, to, to figure out how to do the job before I could come up with an estimate to send to them and then spend however much time typing in an estimate and then saying, this is too much money. I have to charge less. I can't charge as much. I think I was charging 35 bucks an hour and I felt that I was outpricing myself. And then when I started getting into more kitchen and bathroom work, I was charging $50 an hour. And then when I started hiring somebody, I wasn't really changing my pricing. I was just trying to charge that same rate and then get things done faster. So I was still only looking to make 400 bucks a day, but then I had somebody on full time, was just hoping I could get it done faster and turn more work over faster and not actually charge more money for them. Um, which hearing it now seems actually insane, but that was how I learned. So I look back on all that and I understand the growth was stunted. It's always been Um, I am very conservative. I I don't like to take a ton of risks when it comes to business and money and my family. Um, and that just, that's a personality trait and I like to control, um, what's within my control and have as much of that as possible. And I, I just, I, I'm fairly conservative when it comes to the growth of the business and how much exposure, um, I'm willing, I'm willing to, to risk, um, but I, I do, I'm appreciative of the way that things started and being self-taught a lot and really just taking one job at a time and then, and then really understanding how to do something and being hands-on and involved in every aspect of that and, and making mistakes and then having the personality to not only figure out how you made the mistake, but why, and then going and fixing it and then vouching to never make that mistake again you know, I gained a lot of wisdom, um, a lot of painful wisdom that I'm not sure I would have gained uh, working for somebody else. Um, and a lot of those lessons I still take and carry with me to this day. So um, it, it definitely wasn't the easiest route. Um, I, I'm not sure I'd want to be 18, 19 years old again, trying to figure all of this out because I don't think it was it was until I was at least 25 and we had Selby. Um, no, I had Selby when I was 27. So it wasn't until I was like 27 where I realized I have to get my shit together. And I have to legitimize everything, um, which I'd started to do. Let's see. She was born in 2013. And I think it took until like 2015 for me to really get my ass moving and figure out that I had to do things differently. Again, that was right around the same time that I met Nick. And, uh, we, we were really, um, pushing each other to do more. And and Nick was a really good sounding board and setting a really good example of where my business should be heading and what I should be doing for, for my business. So it wasn't until then that I really got out from under myself and really started pushing myself and allowing myself to grow. So from 2015 on, there were some tough years there, um, up through COVID, it was, there was a lot to learn, a lot of lessons and it was difficult. And I feel at this point now it's 2023, I've been in business for 13 years 
that I'm in, I'm in a good spot and I've, I've established myself, um, and I've learned a lot and I'm confident and I have a, a fairly good understanding of my systems and my processes and where I want to be. So it took a really long time to get here. And it, it wasn't even until like two, three years ago that I've, I felt as good as I am now from a business standpoint, um, a mental standpoint, a, a confidence standpoint. Um, and a lot of that is, is due to lessons that I learned early on, um, in business and, and really being self-taught and, and being held accountable by myself and by customers to, to do what I had to do, um, and always put my best foot forward. So, uh, that, that is how I started my business. Those were a few of my, my first jobs, um, uh, a few of my first lessons learned experiences, how I started, how I approached business. Um, I've always tended to be lean and not expose myself to too much risk. Um, that's just not my style. I'd rather be more conservative and manage my business and manage my expenses. So my story is probably, um, a little bit different than a lot of people who just wanted to get in and grow, grow, grow. But I'm sure that there's a lot of, a lot of guys and girls out there have done the same thing. They work by themselves. They stayed lean. They, they took things as they had come and didn't really force anything. That would be more of myself. Um, it wasn't until the past few years that I really put my foot down and said, Hey, this is what I do. If you want to hire me, you hire me. If not, I'm going to go work for somebody who wants what I do. Um, and that, that's been a big change for me and for my business, but whew, it took at least 10 years to get there. Um, so if you're just starting out, keep your head down, um, keep refining your systems, keep refining your processes, keep expanding your network, keep working really hard, keep your head up. Uh, every day is not great. Every year is not great. Um, you have to look at it in, in bigger, <clears throat> bigger, uh, a bigger vantage point than just day to day, month to month, year to year. Sometimes it's two, three years that you need to quantify um, to make to make sense and and have things look a little bit clearer. But hopefully that gave you a better understanding of where I come from, what my business looked like. I really had no no vast or or uh, incredible ambition for my business. Um, it was a means to an end and it was more the case of, Hey, there's not a lot of other things that I want to do and I can maybe do this. Um, and then as I get into it, I, I did, I did somewhat fall in love with the craft and working with my hands and building things. And I really enjoyed that for a long time. And not that I don't enjoy that now, but there's other aspects of the business that I do enjoy. Um, and, uh, I still enjoy a lot of the hands-on, so I do want to stay there, but it's it's not the day-to-day -day, um, working with my hands that I'm quite as in love with as I once was. Um, <clears throat> I understand the bigger, I, I enjoy the bigger picture and making designs come to life and the, the whole process more than just me being on the tools. I do enjoy the management and the setup and the planning and the organization and all of that stuff um, cumulatively. So I hope this gives you a better understanding of where I come from, what my business looked like, and where I am now. Um, and it sheds light on a little bit of that for you guys. As always, thanks for tuning in. Um, I was just speaking with Doug. I've been getting more and more requests to hop on a phone call with you guys and girls for a consulting call. Um, and I've always done it. I, I used to do it through my Instagram page where there was a book now button and it stopped working through square and I've tried to fix it. So I've gone over to you guys shooting me an email and then me sorting out what days and times work best for you, getting something scheduled. That's the best way to do it right now. Tyler at trghomeconcepts.com. I'm limited to my availability there. So if that's something that you want to do, shoot me an email sooner than later and I will get that sorted out with you. I am also because more people are getting a hold of me and it's harder to get these people filled in on a first come first serve basis. Um, I am really going to spend some time with Doug trying to get that set up so that I can just have a list of times for you guys through the Square app to go on and pick and sign up and there's less back and forth. Easier for you, easier for me. So as soon as I have that set up, you guys will be the first to know 
Um, but I appreciate everyone who has reached out to me, who set up a consulting call. Um, I appreciate the sponsors as well. We have Cucan Brothers, Anderson, Windows and Doors. Again, uh, it's really nice to have these companies um, and people like Ryan and the team up there at Cucan really supporting me and believing in me and uh, funding a lot of this venture and, and just making it easier for me to set time aside from work to devote to this Um, because it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and I I can't have the bags on while I'm doing this. So if it weren't for you guys consistently listening and proving the numbers to be valuable to these people, I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, And if it weren't for the the vendors and the partners and the sponsors, um, it it takes everyone. Um, So thank you to all of you. There is one other thing that I want to mention. So I had a consulting call with a guy named Andy Steele today. And he asked me, let me pull this up here. He asked me if I was going to be up in Connecticut. Let's see when it is. Um, I think it's in October, he said. Uh, Let's see. Home. So he's involved. I know fine home building is involved with it um the keep craft alive and let's see oh october 21st 2023 so it looks like it is a saturday it's called touch a trade um t-o-u-c-h-a-t-r-a-d-e dot org he's involved with it it's a volunteer organization um but you can check out their website again it's going to be october 20 first, um, 10 AM to 4 PM. It's up in Connecticut in Kent, Connecticut. Um, it looks like it's a way that you can get involved, um, with somebody who is not experienced with the trades and, and just get your hands dirty for a day and learn a little something about, um, create trade and craft and everything else. So if you are available, if you're in the area, you want to check that out, check out their website, touchatrade.org. Thanks, Andy, for the phone call and uh, showing me this organization. So check them out. All right, guys, I will catch you next week. As always, thank you. Uh, Thanks for following along. Keep spreading the word. Keep sending me emails with ideas, uh, DMs with ideas. I appreciate it. All right, guys, see ya.